today, Paul, you were talking to us about chance and the necessity of chance for God to have sovereignty. Doesn't randomness just mean that the world is meaningless? Well, I think that things can be meaningless if they are random. But the fact that they are random doesn't necessarily mean they're meaningless. Um, because meaning can occur at a higher level. There are things which are random, like um, the movement of the atoms in the air between us. But if I impose uh, a speech onto it, then although there is still randomness present, information can be carried through those random movements until it gets to your ears. So meaning and purpose can be consistent with randomness at one level so that although there may be um, things happening by chance at one level, in a larger scale it can be very regular and purposeful. Do you think this tells us something about the nature of God? Is God somehow chaotic but also regular in the way that he works? Well I think that, that God is able to cope with things at, at a random level and that he is powerful and wise enough to adapt his actions to take account of whatever happens and that he can allow a certain amount of freedom uh, to us and to the world that he's made but still uh, bring about his ultimate end uh, which is good so that although um, we can misuse our freedom um, God can ultimately bring about his purpose even if we do evil. It tells us something about um, his power and his love for us, that he's able to cope with whatever we do and still bring his loving purpose uh, out of it. That's a very positive way of approaching the fact that we have difficulties in life and suffering. What would you say about on the subject of suffering? Because obviously that's a really huge theological um, issue. Well, I think that we often use chance um, as a means of ensuring fairness. For example, um, people in juries are, are chosen at random. The numbers in a lottery are chosen at random. We wouldn't want to think that even God was interfering with the outcome of the lottery. We, we would ask him to let things just fall um, purely by chance. So that's fairer for everybody. But yet somehow we want him to interfere when those same chance things hurt us or cause pain. Now God could do that, he could interfere constantly to change the world and to prevent harm happening to it. Or he could use those accidents and random illnesses and disasters that happen to bring about another purpose. Part of that purpose is us learning how to trust him and, and to have faith in him even though we can't predict what's going to happen because that is really the essence of faith to trust someone even though you don't know what's going to happen and I think perhaps from what Jesus has told us about what happened to the man who was born blind for example that it wasn't his fault or his parents fault or anybody's fault it just happened but here was an opportunity for him to experience God's grace in a way that perhaps he couldn't have done had that not happened. I know that sounds in a sense very pious, that it's all very well for me to say that because I'm not blind, I've not suffered in that way, but one still has to trust that the other evidence we have of God's love enables us to trust him even for those things that we can't fully understand. And that there is a possibility that, and people do find this in their experience, that they get to know God in a way through suffering that they would never have done without it. That's easy to say, but hard to do in practice. But that's where God's grace comes, that he is with us in it. And that's really the message of what I was saying today, that God's providence and sovereignty consists of him being alongside us no matter what happens. He promised us that he'd be with us if we are persecuted and evil comes to us beyond our control. But evil could come from other sources beyond our control and God is still with us and he'll help us through it and help us to grow in a way that um, brings good out of that. In your talk today there was a lovely story about the Rabbi Lionel Blue and how he told the story of the Jewish businessman who was in financial difficulty. He prayed to God to help them win the lottery. What about the people who do wonder why God isn't just allowing them to win the lottery every week and why doesn't everyone win the lottery? How does that work in terms of chance and fairness? Well I don't want to build a theolo theology or philosophy <laughs> on a joke um, and, 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 and indeed if there's a point to, to yeah. draw out of that it, it is that we need to embrace the reality of chance in the world and mm -hmm. um, 
and God is able to work even through random events um, so one can't ask God as it were to help us win the lottery um, in quite that way but we need to realize that um, chance things are real in the world but that God is with us in it mm -hmm. um, and that's really all I'm saying that um, no matter what happens we can trust God to to be with us in the ups and downs of life. Paul Hewitt, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.